Good morning. How are you doing this morning? It's time for Savannah Lexicon. I'm Wayne Waters, and I am so happy you have joined us here this morning. If you're a first-time listener, let me just tell you that Savannah Lexicon is a show designed to inform the listener about important social, political, and cultural issues that shape Savannah as well as about opportunities to experience things in and around this beautiful city that might bring an added measure of grace and joy to your life. So basically, I bring in folks from the area in the political sphere, social services, cultural things, and sometimes just for fun, and we just have a good, lively, interesting discussion. So it's not uh, anything that uh, should bore you. If it is, we're doing something wrong. But that's not going to happen today because today's guests are Teresa Bayman, Director of Programs and Services for the Alzheimer's Association of Coastal Georgia, and also uh, Erica Backus, Director of PR for Visit Savannah. And we're going to be talking about the Alzheimer's Association of course, and we're also going to be talking about the big event that is going on tomorrow evening at the Savannah International Trade and Convention Center. That, of course, is the annual world-famous Dancing Stars of Coastal Georgia, which is a lot of fun, but also uh, an important fundraiser for the organization. Now, we have a little housekeeping to get involved in before we get with that because I have to give the world-famous, another world-famous thing here, the general disclaimer. The viewpoints expressed in the following program are not necessarily those of WRUU, its license holder, or its staff. You know, it was, it was either do that or they would not allow me to do the show. So we got we to gotta do that. Uh, it's a good... Thursday morning here in Savannah, Georgia. So how are you guys? Good morning. Good morning. We're doing great. How about you? Good. I'm doing well. Good. I'm doing well. Thank you. I well, appreciate thanks for so having much. us. Yeah. yeah. Well, thank you all for coming in. I do appreciate it. This is a, a big event. And, you know, uh, there are lots and lots of good uh, worthwhile organizations and worthwhile uh, events, fundraisers, and what have you in this city. This is one that does hold a special place in my heart. Just that I have had, like so many people, so many people, unfortunately, have had a, you know someone in their family uh, deal with this and ultimately succumb to this in my particular case. So it is something that's near and dear to my heart, and I certainly wanted to get you guys on the show today so that we can talk about not only the event, though certainly that, but also just about the Alzheimer's Association here in town. Now, Teresa, you are the Director of Programs and Services, is that right? I am, I okay. am. I've had that privilege for the last five years and um, actually came on board with the Alzheimer's Association about 21 years ago 21? as a volunteer. Wait a minute. Yeah. You, you, you guys, <laughs> Did I, I don't just know tell my age there? I, well, no, no. <laughs> you guys, I don't know if any of you know, Teresa, I'm sure some of you do, but I'm looking at her and I'm thinking to myself, wait a minute, do they let toddlers, <laughs> do they allow Absolutely. toddlers You know what, you're my new best friend, Wayne. I <laughs> well, love that. Well, I can't believe you don't look like you could have been doing anything serious 21 years ago. Uh, well, when you find your passion, <clears throat> it just sticks with you. And Alzheimer's and working with those families, her face with dementia has been my passion. Wow. So well, I love good. doing it, and I'm happy to be here. And and where are you from? I'm actually a Savannah girl, you born are and Savannah raised. Girl. Yes, all right. Yes, and um, I worked in Atlanta for about seven years, and that's where I kind of fell into Alzheimer's. It's kind of a funny story. It was during the Olympics, mm-hmm. the '96 Olympics, and right. nowhere to live. I'd moved up there for a job, so they said, "Don't you worry, we'll put you up in an apartment." But, mm-hmm. but they didn't tell me as I'd be living mm-hmm. on the Alzheimer's unit. <laughs> <laughs> and um, three months later, when it was time to move out, I fell in love with them. Wow. And I just knew okay. that's where I was supposed to be and what I'm supposed to be doing. So okay. here I am, many years later, still doing it and loving it. Good, good, good. All right, and, and, and we'll go. We're going to talk about the organization itself for <laughs> just a minute, but let's let's uh, uh, skip over here to uh, for a for a moment. 
And uh, and and Erica, you're from. I am. I was born right you, here in Savannah, Georgia, exactly. but raised in Statesboro. I thought so, but raised in Statesboro. Raised in Statesboro. A good Georgia Southern good uh, a Georgia grad Southern. like like me. <laughs> All I, right, I am Go too. <laughs> and uh, although I'm sure it was uh, considerably earlier than when you were there. Um, and uh, yeah, and you, of course, the director of uh, public relations for Visit, Visit Savannah. Savannah. I am. It was actually my internship out of Georgia Southern. Is that I've right? I've been with the organization almost twenty years. Wait a minute. So, yeah. You too. Also, Wait also a, a minute. What is this? Hey. I got to talk to the people in Savannah about about it's the hiring it toddlers. Keeps and I yes. moist a couple. Oh no. Your skin is looking it, good. Uh, yeah, hod- hiring toddlers to do important, serious jobs. I'm not sure about this, but okay. And I, or either that or y'all are lying. I'm not sure. What, but I I believe I believe you're not lying. I believe it is in fact true. But wow. Okay, both of you. That's interesting. Um, all right, and, and we and, and we should I should go ahead and say that uh, that Erica is one of those brave souls. Now we're gonna we're gonna wait a minute to talk about the actual competition, but Erica is in fact one of those brave souls who is going to dance. Is that correct? And I am shaking in my boots. You can't tell because I'm seated, but I am nervous. Nelly over here. <laughs> oh man, that but I couldn't is... be I couldn't be more honored and privileged to be asked to participate in such a great cause. But yeah, I'm a little nervous. Nervous. I bet you are. <laughs> I I would be t- oh, uh, shaking my boots for sure. Uh, but that's gutsy. Good for you. Okay, Teresa, let's just yes. talk about the organization itself uh, a little bit. Um, y'all do so many things. <laughs> Oh, we're a lot of hats. I do. Um, We are a nationwide organization, mm -hmm. and we're dedicated to working with families with any form of dementia. You Mm -hmm. know, the Alzheimer's Mm -hmm. and Related Dementias Association is a bit much for for a tagline, but we do work with any form, be it Lewy body, vascular dementia, mixed dementias, or traumatic Mm -hmm. brain injury, no matter Mm -hmm. what. The cause, we're there to support families, we're there to educate them about the different diseases, about the trajectory of those diseases, clinical research. We work with caregivers, be they professional or home caregivers. And that's so important. We do. And we work with first responders. I'm actually a post-certified instructor, so I work with GBI and State Patrol and local law enforcement, and I teach them how to do search and rescues Mm -hmm. because wandering is actually Mm -hmm. one of the most concerning and Mm life-threatening side effects of this disease. Yeah, yeah. I know a little bit about that. You probably do, too. Yeah, I know about that. Yeah, most people do. And one of the things about dementia is that 75% of Americans have a close connection with someone with dementia so 75 percent. it wow. doesn't it doesn't care what race you are what religion how much education you've had it affects everybody equally and so lots of families mm. come to us from all different facets of life and we're there to help them and the most important thing is that we help them at no charge we mm. everything that we do our programs and services are free to families oh, and that's because of wonderful people like Erica mm-hmm. and I'll tell you Wayne it really was the fact that the money raised uh, here stays here yeah and that's really yeah. one of the key factors that kind of helped me sign on to participate um, mm. in this project and help raise money for Alzheimer's of coastal Georgia all of the funds are here to support local families um, folks going through the struggle um, folks needing support and um, that you know like you said we all have an experience with Alzheimer's and just to know that there is support locally uh, for our loved ones and needs really kind of really sold me into participating in this okay that's that is good to know because it is a national organization there is a Georgia uh, there's a Georgia chapter, chapter, yes. and then there's an Atlanta uh, our, office. As our well. main office is in Atlanta, and um, because Georgia, you know, we're we're a pretty big state, so we yeah. have regional offices, regional service areas, and so the regional office out of Savannah serves 19 counties. So essentially, we wow. serve from South Carolina to Florida, all on the coast, and about two hours inland. So that's um, a lot. Yeah, we travel a bit during the day, but it's. <laughs> yeah. um, all for a good cause and i really love what i do and i think you have to really be dedicated to to serve that many counties but i I have to tell you i have to give a lot of kudos to those the volunteers that work with us we have support group leaders we have a speakers bureau and all of those wonderful people are out there providing awareness and education and they do it in the name of the alzheimer's association nice 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 okay uh man i'll tell you uh it's a good organization. Y'all, y'all should be applauded for what you do, and and those who uh, 
who contribute in other ways too, like like Erica and others. Um, it's uh, and you've got there's a lot of it. There's some great information online. Absolutely, our website is fantastic. It's got everything for the caregiver. It's got information for people who've been diagnosed. It is information for people who are looking at symptoms. Knowing the warning signs is really mm-hmm. important because yeah, yeah, yeah. how many people walk in their kitchen and stand there and look around and think. What am I doing here? Mm. And, you know, I get that call. I've lost my keys. I've mm. walked around with my glasses on my head looking for them for 10 minutes. Yeah. And, yeah. you know, those are normal things that happen yeah. to everybody. Yeah. And so yeah. people want to know, what do I look for? And so we have information on the 10 warning signs of dementia. Mm. And that's one of the awareness programs that we get a lot of requests for. Um but it's important for people people to be able to get on that website, including caregivers. And I think yeah. that's a huge, huge benefit to caregivers because we have an Alzheimer's navigator that helps them key in information and then help them navigate the disease. Mm. And we also have ALZ Connected. It's an online support forum. So if you're having issues like, I can't get mom to take a shower, you key right. that into right. ALZ Connected and it populates with lots of ideas that other caregivers across the nation have tried Mm. and been successful with so it's like Mm. talking to other caregivers getting Mm. great ideas all from the comfort of home but you can also go on you can call our 800 number it is available 24 7 um, 800-272-3900 and when you call that number you get a live volunteer who's going to be be able to answer your questions and if you need a care consultation, you're having difficulty with issues with your loved one, you can be connected to a licensed counselor on mm, the spot. Mm, okay. Yeah. Nice, I nice, can tell nice. you through my uh, recent participation with the ALZ, mm-hmm. I've learned some really interesting facts about Alzheimer's that I never knew. Um, you know, looking at the ALZ.org site, I found out that two-thirds of those with Alzheimer's disease are women. That's nearly 3.3 million people I, in the yeah, United States. I saw States. that, too. I didn't yeah. realize it was quite that high. I didn't quite either. It's quite yeah. interesting. And, and mm. that every 66 seconds, someone in the United States develop Alzheimer's. And that's that's something to really think about, something that hit me hard as, as you know, I'm of the age now where my parents are starting to age. Right. And I'm starting to be, kind of move more into that caregiver role. And being aware of facts like these, being aware of the warning signs, you know, kind of, I think, make me um, a better caregiver, kind yeah. of help me start you know, stop issues before they start. Mm, and, you know, the mm. ALZ has all kinds of great information where you can go for these resources. Yeah, it really is a, a well done uh, website. There are, are all sorts of things. And uh, I think, too, one of them, um, uh, you know, there's like a message board kind of a thing, there too, is. right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. So, uh, and chat rooms. So, absolutely. So, you can talk to other caregivers, you can talk <clears throat> to, um, physicians you can talk to anyone on these message boards and Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. i think there's some comfort in numbers when you realize that you're not walking this very isolating journey right on your own that there's other people dealing with the same issues you are a little bit of comfort in that absolutely absolutely absolutely. you know because sometimes people you know often people uh have family and friends around and whatever but sometimes uh they may not be very knowledgeable about it they may not know it from the inside so to speak or from literally dealing with it uh, it's good to have uh, an online community out there i think even those uh, who do understand or have been through it before sometimes they don't know how to deal with it and so avoidance is one of the mechanisms that Mm -hmm. kicks in i mean we're not all clear-cut caregivers what a strange world Mm -hmm. this would be if we were all walking around hugging each other and taking Mm -hmm. care of each other it'd be a little bit strange but at the same kind time, like the idea, though, but, I kind of right, do, yeah. too, but I, think, I don't think we get a lot of work done if we <laughs> no, were all doing true. that. That's true. Um, but what we have to remember that there are different personalities, and some people are cut out to be caregivers. And I think if that's the role that you've assumed, kudos to you. I think that says mm-hmm. a lot about Absolutely. you. And, you know, caregivers yeah. ask me all the time, what's your advice to me? And I always say, trust your instincts, because anything that you do out of love for someone, it's going to be a right good thing. Good thing to do, Mm -hmm. right thing to do, no matter the outcome. Mm -hmm. Don't worry Mm -hmm. about the outcome. Make the decision with your gut instinct. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And and let me just say, for the record, that we you you are listening to WRUULP Savannah Georgia one hundred seven point five FM WRUU dot org. We are Savannah Soundings Community Radio with Global Soul. Okay, and uh, yeah, and and we were talking also online on-demand webinars. Yes, we have some fantastic education online. Um, 
information like the basics of dementia, mm-hmm. um, understanding and managing difficult behaviors. We have online training for first responders. We have a Living With series for patients who are actually diagnosed with the disease, for caregivers in middle and late stage. Mm -hmm. All of those programs that are available online are also available in your community. So we encourage you to contact us. Have us come out and talk to your church, to your senior group, Mm -hmm. to your Mm -hmm. bridge club. Whoever it is, we can get a speaker out to you. And let's start that conversation. Excellent. Okay, and we're going to circle round and about and back and forth here as we go through <laughs> the show. So for the moment, let's let's get back over here with Erica and talk about this big dance tomorrow <laughs> night. Now, by the well, by the way, I should say it's I think it's six p.m. to midnight or, or whenever. That's right. Uh, I think the breakout I saw seven o'clock, maybe cocktails and dinner eight o'clock. Dancing. Ah, don't remind me. <laughs> She's going to be great. I'm going to be great. You're going to be <laughs> Thanks, fine. Thanks, Teresa. You're going to be fine. I have to tell you, they've, you know, working in marketing for over 20 years, they've done a fantastic job on grabbing on to something that's so popular in pop culture right yeah, now. And that's, absolutely. of course, Dancing of the Stars. Yeah. And and using it as a as a fundraising tool locally to really kind of support a great cause. Um, mm. They've got a great group of folks dancing. Everyone from Mita Adler to Joe Welch, to Johnny Gannum, to Ashley Gold. Fantastic lineup Mm, um, of folks mm. who've already, and get this, raised $265,000 for this organization. And that's before we even step on the (laughs) dance floor. And you haven't even gotten up (laughs) there on the dance dance floor No one's even seen me shake it yet. (laughs) <laughs> and you are going to shake it, I believe, because can we tell what, what number you're doing? I, you can tell. Okay. I was told to do something a little sassy, and so an ode to my mother, because this is one of her favorite songs, I will be dancing to Lady Marmalade. Oh, hey, man. sister, soul, sister, go, sister, soul, sister. So get ready. It's either going to be tragic or epic. Oh, no. <laughs> You're no. already a success because you've already re- helped raise all of this money for oh, families. Absolutely. And, and that's what this is all about. Yeah, raising absolutely. money, raising awareness. And Erica, you've already you've already oh, done all of that. Thanks. And so I tell you, your swan song is tomorrow night. <laughs> it sure is. <laughs> and I tell you, it has been a blast. I never considered Good. myself a dancer. Um, I've probably been doing about four or five weeks now of dance class with Savannah wow. Ballroom. Yeah. I've lost about 15 pounds in oh, the process. Yeah. Hey, hey, all that great <laughs> exercise. But it really is so fun and yeah, when i think yeah. about that i am doing it for a great cause and i've got my own little cheering squad behind me my friends and yeah. family are coming out to support sure. um and they've also donated you know to this fabulous organization i, I really am excited about tomorrow night and i can't wait to to get out there and wow the crowd and I'll tell you, the whole ballroom will be behind you once oh, that music great. starts oh, yeah. and the crowd gets excited oh, they're yeah. all going to be behind you and you're going to do great it's going to be a lot of fun absolutely really excited. yeah absolutely yeah. All right, and, and this thing, um, I think that Kim Gusby. Yes, Kim okay, Gusby. Kim yeah, Gusby. Kenya, Kenya Kabeen. Kenya Kabeen. Kenya Kabeen. Kenya Kabeen. Kenya Kabeen. Kenya Kenya Kabeen. Of course, Kim with WSAV. She's still yeah. with WSAV, she right? Is. <laughs> she is. And yeah. he is uh, E93 Radio. That's he correct. Is. Okay. As long as he's not on the same time slot, I'm <laughs> Because I'm sure we're neck and neck in, in competition. Well. He is. His <laughs> mother, very, very young, yes, his um, developed. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. He has been oh, I'm sorry to the hear that. epitome of a beautiful He character. has. He's done an amazing mm. job with his mom. I've known Kenyon for, for many years, and he is more dedicated to her than I've seen any son to a mother. And it's really quite touching, and it's great that he also supports the organization. And so. it's an inspiration to others Absolutely. who see this job kind of unfolding ahead of them and see that Kenya has done it with such grace. And um, he's just an amazing person all around. And um, I think when you have somebody in the community Mm. that's willing to talk about their experience as a caregiver Mm. and really create that buzz of awareness, Mm. it makes other people feel like they can step up and ask questions. And we really appreciate that. That's true. Well, good on you, Kenya. (laughs) I'm I'm happy to hear that. Um, Sounds like a heck of a guy. Uh, Sorry to hear about his mother's scenario but you know that's how it goes sometimes but she's got a good caregiver there well, she has handled it with grace as well she, she is a, a sweet and wonderful person excellent excellent so they're going to be the celebrity host mm-hmm. yes we're going to have some celebrity dance judges i guess in, including a a dean i believe is that right 
Bobby and Claudia Dean will be judging. Okay, Bobby and um, Claudia Dean. As Dean. will Jonathan Dune, and Jonathan is from Sydney, Australia. He's a competitive ballroom dancer since six years old, so he's really got the foot wow. up on the rest of us. He'll be he'll be judging, so I have to make sure I impress him. Another toddler <laughs> thing. We've we got a thing of toddlers who are doing these magnificent things here. I don't know. And then we have a then we have a. Um, U.S. Army Air Force Weapons Director uh, Kevin Jackson will also be a, um, a judge for this competition. And Kevin is a longtime Savannah resident, of course, his mother being Miss Edna Jackson, the former mm. mayor of Savannah. So mm. Kevin will be out there also watching us shake our, our, our groove things for yeah. Alzheimer's. And so. Edna herself was a caregiver. She is. She's mm. um, been very right. outspoken about her experience being a caregiver and has always been a longtime supporter of the Alzheimer's Association. So we're delighted to have her family join us. Excellent, excellent, excellent. So uh, this is this is such a big event. I, it's it's um, you know because it's it's you know you say it's a good you know there's different things you can do for an event and they're interesting whatever but this is really fun. I yeah. mean this is something. <laughs> this that, puts the fun and fun thing. It really does. Exactly. <laughs> there it, there you, you go. You, you mentioned it's a big event. Teresa yeah. just now shocked me with some information oh, yeah? that I did not know, and that is that they're expecting over nine. Hundred people to attend the gala tomorrow Whoa. night. Yeah, we usually sell out at nine hundred people. So wow. yeah, there's going to be a lot of people there. Is- and um, <laughs> but but the thing about these people is they are all there to support these dancers. Okay. They are there for the cause mm-hmm. and to have fun. And they're going to be behind you. I'm so so excited. <laughs> yeah, it's going to be a lot of fun. Wow. <laughs> Don't be nervous. It's great. Too late. Erica. <laughs> the success has already come. You, you, are so, you are so gutsy. It's oh, great. no. It's going to be so good. Nah, this, you know, it, it is. I'm quite sure one of those events, and I have to admit I have not been to one, but it's one of those events, no doubt, where the audience is so in your corner. Absolutely. They'd, be in, they'd be in your corner anyway if they know you. So, I mean, there's already that, and you, a lot of people know you in this city. But even beyond that, uh, well, you can look at the amount of money raised and each dollar is a vote for a dancer. And so we already have an excess of 265,000 votes. So I think that says a lot for the crowd being behind you. That's right. So when you get out there, you're going to have the music, you're going to have your instructor and 900 people cheering for you. What could be better? That's right. And it's not too late to support. We are still accepting donations and we're still taking votes for um. People's Choice Dancer, Erica Backus. <laughs> yeah, we got to push Erica. Got to push it's Erica not now. too late to vote for Erica Backus. One dollar a vote helps me win that peop. People's Choice Award, um, but go. who knows? I might even bring the Mirabal Trophy home. That's a top I, prize absolutely. for dancing, right? It is, it is. And you know what? Every vote for Erica is a vote for a family here right. in coastal Georgia yep. because we take those dollars, we spend them on education and support of families and. It makes such a difference every dollar. So whether you're going to vote five, ten dollars, twenty dollars, <laughs> go onto our website, cast your vote today, throw a little love Erica's way, yeah. and um, it's a vote for families here in Coastal Georgia. Yeah. And you can do that online at act. dot dot org. Okay. Good, good, good. And when does it when when is the cutoff on that? I mean, does it go right to showtime? Do it we goes know? right, to, good, showtime. So you, right hey, to showtime. Yeah, and you know what? Keep on voting after after <laughs> showtime. <laughs> that would probably, probably be okay. To say we that. do, and we still have votes coming in afterwards. Mm-hmm. But um, yeah, but so. people know that this is all about supporting families facing a dementia diagnosis in Coastal yeah, Georgia. Absolutely. And um, this year we have hit the million dollar mark. Wow, so that's awesome! We raised awesome. a million dollars for families here wow. in Coastal Georgia, and that's that's amazing. I think great. that says a lot. You know, we're yes, we're creating new programs and new support, and new volunteers, and you know, when I when I talk to families and they say, "I didn't know," and now I understand. You see this light bulb go on in their yeah. in their eyes, and that they understand how to be a better caregiver. And let me tell you, that's worth a million dollars right there. Just seeing that light go on in someone's eyes and knowing that they're not alone anymore. Absolutely. And I can't, you know, I can't think of one family member that has not been touched um, by this disease. And it's, you know, I've seen my friends go through it at an early age. I've seen my friends' parents go through it at an early age. People Mm -hmm. I consider, you know, close to me. And it's, it's just so lonely um yeah, of a yeah, disease it's yeah. it's it's stealing memories it's stealing lives and you know it's 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 something that we definitely you know as as a country need to support 
and get behind. And Absolutely. you know, ALZ of, of Coastal Georgia is is doing that. They're they're taking the bull by the horns. They're raising the funds needed, and they're helping those you know friends like Kenyon Cabine and Edna Jackson, and you know friends out there who are going through it every day. So I really, mm. really have been so impressed with the organization, the people behind it, the volunteers. It's it's definitely an experience that I will cherish you know forever. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Well said. Well said. Okay. We're going to take a brief break. Nobody go anywhere out there. We're going to be right back. We won't be going long. And to remind you, this is WRUULP, Savannah, Georgia, 107.5 FM, WRUU.org. We are Savannah Soundings Community Radio with Global Soul. And Savannah Lexicon will be right back. Hang on. This portion of WRUULP Savannah Soundings programming is made possible by a grant from Sentient Bean, offering fair trade coffee, vegan and vegetarian food, and breakfast all day. Located at 13 East Park Avenue, across the street from the tennis courts at Forsyth Park. Our menu and special events listings can be found at sentientbean.com. And we're back. See, that wasn't long. That wasn't long at all. We are back. Savannah Lexicon, and we are speaking, if you are just joining us, we are speaking with Teresa Bayman, Director of Programs and Services for Alzheimer's Association of Coastal Georgia, and Erica Backus, um, PR with Visit Savannah, and uh, uh, Erica is also going to be one of the competing dancers tomorrow night at the big event the dancing stars of coastal georgia and she's excited <laughs> she's almost dancing in her seat over here if you could see her she's Actually, dancing sh- in her seat the shaking you're seeing is nerves <laughs> <laughs> she is already a star as far as the alzheimer's association is concerned absolutely i'm so excited tomorrow night's my big debut on stage so. that's right that's right <laughs> oh, we'll it's see. gonna be fantastic <laughs> it's gonna be good we're looking forward to it uh okay let's let's just talk a minute this this is like well really i mean any and every disease really uh but but uh, certainly true in regards to this as well, that the earlier you kind of catch things, the better. The better you can treat it, the earlier you can treat it, the better you can treat it, the better you can deal with it. 
Yes, we do know that earlier diagnosis has better quality of life outcomes. Yeah. Um, right now, there is no cure yet. Yeah, right. Yeah, sure. and I stress yet because yeah. we are we are also very active with um, lobbying the NIH to get more funding for na- – that's National Institute of Health – to get more funding for yeah. Alzheimer's. We're the sixth leading cause of death among wow. those over age 65, and we're the only one of the 10 leading causes – that has no cure and no effective mm. treatment. Wow. Yeah. So we are really, we're pushing for more funding. And yeah. since 2012, funding has increased exponentially. We're now in excess of $1 billion a year, which I know sounds like a lot, but mm. in, in the scheme of um, research, that's not a whole lot. Yeah. Um, yeah. They tell us that the magic happens around the $2 billion mark. Wow. So yeah. we continue to push for that. And our researchers are working tirelessly to find ways to slow it down to stop it um, causes for it Mm. but what we Mm. know now and this is so appropriate for june is june is brain health awareness month I and did not know that. Yes. I, so I, sh- for, I, should, I should have lied and said I was fully aware of that. <laughs> <laughs> or I'm you not. could say you forgot. <laughs> 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 so Brain Health Awareness Month, what we talk about is really just taking care of your body to take care of your brain. And that means eating right. And mm. what mm. researchers are telling us is the Mediterranean diet is one of the best for the brain. So yeah. lean meat and fish, leafy greens, nuts, fruits, vegetables, that kind of thing. Um we also want you to get lots of exercise. You know, people, I hear the, the grumble in the crowd when we say that, but it's cardiovascular workouts, getting that blood flow to the brain. Right. That's yes. really what makes a difference. Mm. Um, also, be, being social, you know, mm-hmm. getting out there, mm-hmm. being around positive mm-hmm. people, interacting mm-hmm. with people, um, and challenging your brain. And, you know, yeah. I go down around yeah. to senior organizations and we always talk about, you know, what are you doing to challenge your brain? And people mm-hmm. say, you know, well, I watch Jeopardy every night mm-hmm. and I, you yeah. know, play Sudoku and I do crossword puzzles mm-hmm. and word finds. And my question is always, are you good at it? And yeah. if you're good at it, it's not helping you anymore. Mm-hmm. You have to challenge your brain to learn uh, new things. So, point. you know, right. we say learn learn a new language. Um, if you're okay. great at math, okay. try try word finds. And if you're great at words, try math. We want you to challenge your brain because when you do that, you're creating these new pathways in your brain. And that challenge actually does keep your brain healthier. Mm-hmm. It's more blood flow. The more thought presses, processes you have going at once. And for you, Erica, uh-huh. did you know? One of the best things that you can do for your brain because you are you're learning new information you're learning a new dance you're following a partner you are physically moving you're listening to the music and you have all of these processes going at once so you're mm. really challenging your brain and keeping your brain healthy with what you're doing i totally believe that i've never been more confused <laughs> in my life there you go <laughs> <laughs> I and well, just, <laughs> just know it's doing wonders for your brain, oh, keeping your brain healthy. Yeah, that's a good thing. That's so, interesting, though. That's good, that distinction that, it, it, you know, if it's something that's just coming real easily to you, even if it is uh, an intellectual endeavor of some kind, it, it is probably not helping quite as much as something that just really is making you uh, kind of work yeah, really hard. Yeah, really for it. And, well, and, and you know, and you think when you drive to work in the morning and you're on your yeah. commute, sometimes mm-hmm. you get to work and you think, I don't even remember the commute. Mm-hmm. You know, and you've been mm-hmm. kind of asleep on your commute. Yeah. And that is one of those things that your brain has already learned. It knows. It knows what to look for. So it's not a challenge for you right, anymore. But right. when you go someplace new, you're very aware of your surroundings. You're looking for road signs. You're looking for landmarks and when you do that it's a challenge to your brain so every little challenge that you can provide for your brain is a good thing and um and also this month you know it's the summer solstice june 21st Mm -hmm. and it is not only the longest day for everyone but we recognize our caregivers who live truly the longest day you know Mm. we say it's the 36 hour day Mm. because for many caregivers it it doesn't end you know about 75 percent of caregivers are between the ages of 35 and 65 and they work an 8 10 12 hour day and then they come home and they care for a loved one yeah yeah it's, it's really challenging demanding. for them, yeah. Very demanding. So on June twenty so, first, we recognize caregivers by joining okay. a movement called the Longest Day. Okay, 
Good, good, good. Yeah, you well, can go Karen, to our website. What are some of the early warning signs? Yeah, that's that's what we want to ask. Yeah, what about All that? Right. Because we talked about the earlier you can yeah. you can diagnose it, the better it's going to be. Not that there's a cure <laughs> or anything of that nature, but I mean, it, it can help you deal with it. It can help your quality of life and understanding about it. So. Yeah, what, what, uh, well, memory loss is always the first thing you think of, but yeah. you know, who among us hasn't forgotten something? Mm, that's, indeed. that's normal. It's important to point out that the things that we're talking about are memory, memory loss that disrupts your daily life. So, you know, we talked about walking into the kitchen, standing there and looking around thinking, why am I in here? Mm. And that happens occasionally, but if it's happening regularly, if you're having these regular hiccups, you're forgetting appointments, forgetting your keys, losing your car when you park in a parking lot, those types of things, that's telling you that something is not right. And so we really encourage you to talk to your doctor. Um, Planning and problem solving, you know, running errands. We all Mm kind of have our way of running errands. And, you know, in the Savannah heat, it's always grocery (laughs) store last, Mm. so everything survives on the way home. Mm. Dementia patients would have to have that written out for them. Mm. They're not able to logically reason, I need to go here first and then here, or this Mm. is the best path Mm. to do all my Mm. errands at once. Um, Right, right. You know, we have a lot of golfers here in Savannah. You know, things that you do Mm. on a daily basis, Mm -hmm. like playing golf. Mm -hmm. Familiar activities become a challenge. You're not able to keep track. You're not able to follow the holes in the right order. You're not able to mm, wow. keep score. Yeah, um, yeah. And all those Southern ladies that love to cook, you know, we cook by instinct here in the South. Mm-hmm. It's a pinch of this and a hunk of that. And mm-hmm. they forget the order to put things into the recipe. So uh, hmm. when something that they're used to, it's a familiar yeah. activity and yeah. they're having issues with it. Um you know, we also think of someone with dementia, they are confused to time and place, that that can be a challenge. And, mm. you know, who of us hasn't stood at a checkout and said, what is today? Yeah, what is, what is the date <laughs> what again? What is the date? Yeah. But most of us can at least, we can tell you, you know, it's summertime in Georgia. We're in the month of June. Oh, yeah. And, right. and that's really, that is normal. You know, not forgetting the date is okay, as long as you're kind of in the general um, vicinity of the right date. Mm-hmm. But when someone with dementia has confusion to time and place, it's often that they don't know the time of the year. They don't know where they are. Right. Um, they couldn't tell you the city or the right. year, probably yeah. most importantly. Yeah. Um, yeah. We also see that dementia patients have depth perception issues, especially early on. Hmm. Um, so I know those of you have pulled up behind that car that stops three car lengths before the red light – that person might be having difficulty judging distance to the red light. Really? Um, no, I was completely unaware of that. Yeah, yeah. Um, they might have difficulty getting in and out of the garage, might see some scrapes on the car. Mm. Um, even walking, you know, um, dementia patients tend to be high fall risk. Yeah. So, but a lot of it has to do with that depth perception. In darker rooms, dark floors, mm-hmm. changes in elevation, they're not able to discern how mm-hmm. far it is. How far do I have to step down? Or if a black mat is in front of a door, it looks like a step down. Mm-hmm. And so they may step harder and knock mm-hmm. themselves off balance. Mm-hmm. So that, that depth perception and reading the signs. You know, you and I can yeah. see a sign with an arrow and, mm-hmm. you know, that you can only turn one way. Right. A patient with dementia is not able to discern what those mm-hmm. those signs often mean. Um, they have difficulty finding words. Sometimes they may use words that sound alike. Um, mm-hmm. Look at their watch and say, you know, my hand clock says, mm-hmm. you know, it's 9 a.m. Well, hand clock is not a word that we use, but we know what they mean. And Mm, so mm. they may be using the wrong words, but they may have difficulty finding words. And yes, we all have the whatchamacallit days where (laughs) you can't think of the right word and it happens to me all the time. But it's when that happens on a regular basis. Yeah. Yeah, now, yeah, yeah. Um, okay. number seven, I should kind of be the poster child for. I'm really good at losing my keys. I've gotten better, <laughs> but misplacing things. Um, yeah. But it's not just misplacing things. It's losing the ability to retrace your steps. Yeah. And even if it's a week later, you can't find your sunglasses, you open a drawer, and there they are. And you think, oh, yeah, I remember now. I mm. threw them in there when I was running through the house. Mm-hmm. That's still retracing your steps. Right. So, right. yes. It's okay to lose things, but if it's happening so much that it's really impeding your daily life, you really should talk to your doctor about it. Even if it's stress-related, um, you've got a lot of distraction going on. You know, being a working mom, that's yeah. usually what I'm doing is I've, <laughs> I've lost things. I'm distracted. I've got kids talking to me mm-hmm. at the same time. But mm-hmm. if it's enough to concern you, it's enough to talk to a doctor about. Um, 
making a poor judgment. Okay, who hasn't done that? Yeah. Well, yeah. <laughs> I've most of my 20s. Yes. <laughs> so, but if, if that's your standard MO, you know, you're, you just make bad decisions. This doesn't really count towards you. Um, but making poor judgments. And mm. I can give you, a, for instance, I had a, a precious couple in South Georgia contacted us because she had dementia and was paying the bills. And when she went away on a vacation with her sister, the electric was cut off. So the husband thought, well, you know, it's time for me to take over and pay the bills. Mm-hmm. And when he did, he got a notice about six months down the road that said um, it was the final notice on their timeshare. Well, they didn't own a timeshare. And his wife, who had always made decisions with mm. him, had bought a timeshare when she was Ooh. on vacation. And um, it is not legal for someone with dementia to sign a legally binding yes, contract. So we were course. able to get that reversed. Mm-hmm. But that was so out of character for her. Mm-hmm. Um And oftentimes, even quantitating money, um, the lady that goes to the bank every Friday and withdraws $50, five Mm -hmm. zero zero zero, goes in one Friday and takes out five zero 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 with no decimal Mm -hmm. point. Mm -hmm. And, you know, not the best idea to walk around Mm -hmm. with $5,000. But we see things like that happening a lot. And um, and often... Families have a challenge because there is a change in personality yeah. that um, the sweet little mama they knew has yeah. gotten a little aggressive yeah. or, you know, we've had the the sweet little church lady that now has learned four letter words and uses <laughs> them all she can. Oh um, and it's understand it's the disease. It's not the person. But we do see those changes. And often that can be a challenge to families when it comes to talking about issues like taking away the keys or making yeah. sure yeah, that. Absolutely. Um, that banks are protecting their money because they they are really fodder for for unscrupulous people to take advantage of them. Yes, indeed. So we um, we encourage them to talk to an elder law attorney to get power of attorney to um, ensure that everything is protected when their loved one is having some of these issues. But it's important to note there is some memory loss in normal aging. Of you course. know, we yeah. none of us um, get up off the floor as fast as we used to. Mm-hmm. And so your brain's going to age right along with you. And that slowdown is normal. But if it's enough to make you concerned, it should be enough to concern your doctor. And so you yeah. ask for yeah. a referral to see a neurologist. Mm. A neurologist will take you through a five-step process to get diagnosed. Mm-hmm. And so it will be a full medical history. And that's important because there are genetic components mm-hmm. to different Absolutely. forms of dementia. Yep. And um, they're also going to do a full physical. There should be an extensive panel of blood work done. And they're going to look for things like nutritional deficiencies. They're going to look for other diseases that can cause memory loss. Mm -hmm. They're also going to look at your medications because some medications, even things that we consider benign, Mm -hmm. like um, PM medications that Mm -hmm. have diphenhydramine in them, that's just Benadryl, we think those are very benign, but they can actually cause memory loss. Wow. So the doctors are going to look at what medicines you're on, over-the-counter and prescription. Some statin drugs and heart medications can have them, but um, it's important not to stop a medication without talking to your doctor because the the – benefits will often outweigh the risk mm-hmm. so yeah. um but they'll look at all of that then they'll also do imaging and imaging you know 10 12 years ago could not tell you that alzheimer's was present and mm-hmm. it's important to note that alzheimer's can be diagnosed on an mri they mm-hmm. can see the amyloid plaque that is present mm-hmm. and so people who have heard you can't diagnose it until after autopsy that is no longer true mm-hmm. with our technology now you can see right. that on imaging right. The last piece that you're often referred to is a neuropsychologist, and what they're going to do is it is a pen and paper test. It can be kind of grueling, but what it does is it tells the doctors what parts of your brain are affected, where you need the most support. And often the younger you are, the the more more important that is. And um, do you all know how old you have to be to get Alzheimer's? Do you all have a guess? The youngest person that I know of is 21. Wow. 21 years old. So we're really all at risk. And the younger you are, you know, the more aggressive the disease tends to be. And so doctors will be more aggressive with their diagnosis. Yeah. And, um, 
as we talked about getting an early diagnosis, getting in a good exercise routine, make sure that your nutrition is where it needs to be, and start with some of the medications that are out there and available. Right now, there are only really two types of medication that are FDA approved for Alzheimer's. Mm -hmm. Um, The first is called a cholinesterase inhibitor, Mm. which you'll never have to know again, but cholinesterase inhibitors. Things like Aricept, Exelon, and Razodyne. And those okay. are thought to um, slow down the progression of that amyloid plaque mm. that's that's building okay. up in the brain. Okay. The that's other is Mimetine or Nemenda. Nemenda is thought hmm. to kind of where is spark that process of thinking. It's... Um, it helps thought processes move through the brain a little bit easier. Okay. So um, w- those two medications, and now they actually come together in a medication called Namzeric, but those medications are available in generic and um, oh, different generic. formularies. Oh, yeah, affordable. Excellent. Yeah, much Excellent. more affordable. Yes. So, um, but... You know, we are constantly looking at new drugs that are being developed. There are clinical trials all over the United States. We actually have clinical trials going on right here in Savannah, Georgia. Um, You can get enrolled by talking to your neurologist. And we're also looking for healthy subjects. And that's important because we need to know what's causing this, where it's coming from. And so if you go onto our website and you click on research, you can go to clinical trials and register and look at what's available. And if you want to enroll one, some of them are a one-time blood draw. Others are just answering questions. But every one that you participate in, you get us a little bit closer to an answer. And so we encourage everybody, healthy people, if you have it in your family, that's your great candidate. If you feel that you are in the early stages, again, enroll in these clinical trials because it can give you a lot more information. Excellent. Mm -hmm. Excellent. Very good information. That's what makes tomorrow night even more important, all the information that Teresa just gave. Yeah. Uh, You know, come out and support tomorrow. Absolutely. Tickets are still available. They're $150. That includes uh, dinner, dancing, the show, of course, Um, a cocktail hour, um, and, you know, you're just supporting a great cause. You're, You're helping to make a difference in you know, the nearly, you know, 20 million people that are affected with Alzheimer's every year. Yeah, and we look at Georgia. There are 130,000 Georgians who are yeah. diagnosed with Alzheimer's disease right now. And those are diagnosed. Well, yeah. You, you know, we have a lot of families that, more than that have mm-hmm. felt like they don't want to get diagnosed. Right. and right. But that number is just too large. And yes, um, is. Georgia is considered a tier one state. You know, we have a lot of retirees in Georgia mm. enjoying our beautiful coast. Mm. And that means that the number of baby boomers moving into our area is going to increase. Nice. And, and that's where those numbers are coming from. You know, um, Erica told us every 66 seconds mm-hmm. somebody's diagnosed. By the year 2050, that number is projected to reach every 33 seconds. Wow. And I know just since Good. I came on board with the Alzheimer's Association in 2012 as an employee, that number was at every 70 seconds. Wow. And so just in these few Good five years, it's you know dropped all, already to every 66 seconds. And um, we just there's never enough time. There's never enough um, volunteers out there. So if you want to come work with us, you want to be a speaker, you'd like to come volunteer with our association, you call us on that 800 number, 800-272-3900. Talk to one of our representatives. Um, let them know that you want to be a volunteer in Coastal Georgia, and they'll get you to me. Good, 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 because I was going to bring that up. You certainly uh, can use volunteers. Absolutely. Of, of any number of types, I guess. I mean, uh, people doing various things. We do. We have um, some wonderful volunteers. Um, we consider Erica not only a volunteer, but a star for what she is doing, Aww. all the money she's raised. Um, but we have a lot of other volunteers that are working the event that night. And, yeah. you know, they work quietly behind the scenes, but I have to give them big accolades for what they do because this is time out of their day that they're dedicating so that our families will have what they need. So they have yeah. free programs and services. And, you know, we offer care consultations to families and, you know, families very gingerly say, well, you know, if I come in, what is it going to cost me? And when I say, oh, nothing, Mm -hmm. every, you know, everything I will do for you is a new charge. (laughs) They think that can't be right. Are you sure? Uh Are you sure there's no Uh charge? And, but that's why we do this. That's why we dance in, in the summer. And that's why we um, walk in the fall at our walk to end Alzheimer's and, It's to raise this money so that no caregiver has to go without the support and education that we provide. Good, 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 good. 
Okay, guys, we're going to have to uh, kind of get into the final segment here. So let's let's recap. Um, first off, uh, uh, the website, just the general website address is? Is alz.org. Really easy to find, alz.org. That's easy. And That's if easy. you can click on Georgia or you can do forward slash Georgia. Okay. All right. And that's going to connect you to local resources, support groups in our area, um, events that are coming up, yep, like the everything you need to know, <laughs> like the Dancing with the Stars of Coastal Georgia. Which, again, is tomorrow night from so uh, well, starting out uh, at 6 o'clock with the whole thing and then the dancing, I believe, uh, starting around about 8 o'clock there or uh, more or less, and uh, yeah, you will you will see folks, uh, including Erica Backus, who is with us here today, right. the the uh, uh, director of PR with Visit Savannah, and you are going to be dancing yourself silly, huh? <laughs> Something will be silly I, for I sure. Start, it's probably going to be me. I had another <laughs> another finish in mind with that, I and know. I thought, no, I better not put it that way. So dancing yourself silly dancing is... Dancing myself silly with Savannah Ballroom <laughs> and a pro Alonzo Bichotti. Um, You know, we've had a fantastic time practicing and getting ready, so we're really looking forward to getting out there and shaking it for you guys and helping raise some money for a worthwhile cause. So tomorrow night, 6 p.m. to midnight, um, tickets are still available, $150. That gets you um, cocktail reception, dinner, dancing showcase, um, and lots of great um, mingling. With, it's a with full close, night yeah, out. A lot yeah. of your friends. And it is. So. And it, it's black tie optional. It is. Yep. So you have okay. to really don your best, mm-hmm. get all dressed mm-hmm. up, come yeah. out. It's a yeah. great It's a great date night, guys. Oh, yeah, I'm so sure. This is a super great <laughs> date I'm night. Sure. And, um, and you're supporting a, a fantastic cause. And when you buy your ticket... Y'all don't forget to, you know, attribute that ticket to one of the stars. Yes, so preferably me, but there's also, <laughs> there's also right. 11 kind of led stars Erica into that one. <laughs> the, yes, indeed. The there are a number of good stars. And so, yeah. And so, uh, you, you, and you can still uh, do the dollar or the dollar. Uh, you can still vote. You Even still if, you're, vote. if you're not able to be there that night, mm-hmm. go onto our website, click to donate, choose your star or, you know, sp- spread it across spread all the stars. Around. Yeah. A little bit for everybody. Yeah. And so All right. Hopefully, next time you see me, Wayne, I'll have that mirror ball trophy. I be bet you will. I'll Love be it. Your 2017 uh, Dancing Stars of Coastal Georgia winner. I bet you will. <laughs> it would not surprise me in the slightest. Okay, ladies, thank you so much thank for you, being Wayne. here. Um, this is a very worthwhile organization, a very worthwhile event, and I know Savannah is going to. Uh, to do right uh, by the uh, Alzheimer's Association of Coastal Georgia for sure. Well, thank you for having us. My pleasure. My pleasure. Okay, we're going to, uh, again, take a brief break and a little uh, musical pause, and we'll be right back. So, again, don't go anywhere.
Okay, well, we are in the very final segment here of the show. And I just uh, wanted to, uh, yeah, I want you to definitely tune in. Next week is what I want you to do. We'll be back uh, Tuesday, of course, and Thursday um, at the same time and place, 8 o'clock at 107.5 FM on your radio dial or online. We do still stream online as well, of course. And uh, just just a, a couple of things. I do want to say that uh, if you'd like to, uh, for the businesses, as a business, if you enjoy our programming on WRUULP, please support the station with a donation. Let your customers, neighbors, and friends know that you share our vision of building a thriving community based on a diverse, vibrant radio programming. As a business partner, our listeners will know you support Savannah's only broad-based community radio station. Become a tower sponsor or underwriter. To check out the levels of corporate sponsorship and to donate, go to www.wruu.org business. Again, to check out the levels of corporate sponsorship and to donate, go to www.wruu.org business. Thank you for listening to and supporting W. R-U-U-L-P, and for listening to Savannah Lexicon every Tuesday and Thursday from 8 o'clock in the morning until 9. Uh, But tomorrow night, 6 p.m., Dancing Stars of Coastal Georgia. Uh, It's going to be a big fundraising event for, of course, the Alzheimer's Association of Coastal Georgia. Okay, go out there and make it a good Good Thursday, and I will be back here again on Tuesday and hope you tune in then. Bye-bye.